Okay, now we are continuing our final part of the audio note A and E Lexus signature analysis. And um, now we are recapping uh, the response that as shown in an anechoic chamber versus the in, res uh, in room response. So here I did everyone a favor and uh, I showed what would have been the response if uh, the if, if the response of this speaker was ruler fat, flat so as we would would have placed it in the room where it was measured then I show with this black so this would be the in-room response if we had a ruler flat anechoic chamber measurement as you can see if we had that scenario then we would have an absolutely ghastly 30 dB difference between uh, uh, mid base, mid base here and and uh, deep base, and also between uh, mid base and mid range. 30 dB. That's a, a thousand fold of energy difference between the two. It's just uh, terrible. So that's why, if we have uh, a speaker that measures ruler flat, it's guaranteed that in a real world room it will be the worst ever sounding speakers. And there's an anecdote for that. I don't know who was the engineer, but this really happened that someone designed a speaker, an engineer, a uh, very talented one at that. And it was a pretty, pretty flat response. And he was super, super duper excited. And then he showed it to his friends who were also speaker designers. And all of them anonymously agreed that that was the single worst ever sounding speaker they ever heard. So, so always when you see the anechoic chamber response, just take it with a grain of salt because that's not how the speaker is going to sound, but it will give you clues on the sound. So for example, you can see that he, there, there is this uh, mid range and uh, low high frequency dip between like 1000 hertz to about 6 kilohertz or so and and here because of this dip if we didn't have that we would have a huge boost by the room so your room is going to boost these frequencies anyway and if you do not cut them down but keep them ruler flat then you are going to have in real life when you listen to these speakers and not measure them in an unreal neverland situation then you would have a huge peak here and actually that's the reason why today 95% of high-end speakers sound like crap because they are designed to have a ruler flat response at, at this uh, mid-range uh, lower high frequency range like between especially between uh, kilohertz and 5 kilohertz if this is ruler flat then you are going to have this obscene peak in your room and uh, for those people who have hearing problems uh, this is okay because for them it will sound that they will be really happy because they can hear something without a hearing aid but those people who have good ears good hearing this obscene peak will be just just uh, really bad and that's why most of the high-end speakers are completely unlistenable on the long run because this peak here completely tires your ears so if you listen to speakers and you hear that your ears are bleeding it's because of this and audio not planned this dip here because uh, to make it work in your room so they did not design these speakers for measurements to appease the reviewers they designed these speakers to work in a real world room and that's why this region here drops as well because your room is going to boost the uh, that uh, lower mid base or upper low base anyway to obscene levels and if this was here flat or god forbid a, a blip here aka, aka wilson audio style then in your room this would be like a, a, a truly massive uh, uh, gigantic coloration and for example, that's the signature sound for Wilson Audio, and that's why those speakers have that 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 feel that they have just a tremendous bass. 
but that's a double-edged sword because that huge peak here in the mid base is going to uh, sh sh shadow the low base completely so the price to pay for that Wilson Audio uh, massive uh, mid base is that you cannot hear the lower base. It's it you are going to feel as if it's not there, or even though it's there, but it's not going to register in your consciousness. So it will sound really distorted. So that was about speaker design and uh, imaginary <laughs> uh, tools for engineers which are the anechoic measurements because it's truly imaginary because it doesn't exist in your room uh, but your room does exist and the difficulty is that uh, every room is different but there are certain things that most rooms share and this is also the reason why certain speakers work in some rooms and others don't because uh, some are designed for some extreme rooms uh, like extremely large or extremely over dampened and others are designed for very echoey rooms or tiny rooms, small rooms, etc. And now let's have a look again at the uh, impedance measurements and as you can see this line which is the, uh, the continuous line that's the impedance and the dotted line that's the impedance phase so the impedance tells how hard it is for your amplifier to drive these speakers and the impedance phase tells uh, that how much of that drive power does the speaker turn into motion so when we look at here this is the zero uh, scale and if we go away from zero, like either higher or lower, as measured in degrees, it becomes more difficult for the amp actually not more difficult for the amplifier, but but your speaker basically uh, sees less power than actually is pushed out by your amplifier. And and it, this is the hundred percent efficiency level, and then we are dipping here. And you see it goes to minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees. And we are here between about 50 degrees to minus 45 degrees. And it oscillates between these two. And that's, I would say, pretty good. Uh, 45 degrees is already a significant cut in power. But the, the real trouble starts around above 60 degrees. So if we have 60 degrees or more, then only a, just a tiny fraction of the output power is turning into music. So in this region up here, if you drive your speakers with 10 watt power, they will see only 1 watt or less. So that's how drastic uh, it can be. But as we go here, if we drive with 10 watts, you see 10 watts and then going like 8, 6, 4 and then decreasing. And as you see, the impedance phase and the impedance curves are not together, but they are separated. There's, there's like a phase difference between the two. And that really works out because at those areas, let's look at here, where uh, we have the most... So this is where your amplifier, where your speaker soaks up all the power the amp throws at it. Here, it has the lowest resistance so it means that uh, basically here we are throwing a lot of current at the drivers and the drivers can use that lot of current to to transfer it to a lot of motion and and we, we see one valley here so this is the valley for impedance valley for the tweeter and this is the impedance valley for the woofer and this is the impedance valley for the port and yes, the port is should be treated electrically as a separate driver. And 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 here again, this is your woofer uh, catching up again after your port has uh, stopped working. So basically, this whole thing here is your woofer response broken up in the middle by the port. And uh, when you look at uh, these curves. You can see that where you have these peaks, 
these are the crossover peaks so this is where the crossover lives and uh, part of why this peak is so high is because uh, each driver has its optimum working range which is down here for the tweeter let's say about uh, 20 kilohertz to what is this around 3-4 kilohertz and this is where it works the best and it works the, X, the very very best around 7-8 kilohertz and why? so based on this figure that 7-8 kilohertz peak you can tell that this is a 1 inch uh, tweeter because that size is the physical uh, length for a half wave of that 7-8 kilohertz uh, wave and, and, and when, when the wavelength uh, which is like if you go like up and down so for the up curve that's uh, that's half half wave and when you look at the half wave size and you look at the driver size when the two are the same that's where the driver is most efficient and and we can see it here that it, it's most efficient there and when the uh, the, the frequency the, the sound waves frequency starts to go higher it means that that the sound wave is getting shorter and shorter so compared to to the soft dome tweeter it's now a much smaller frequency and and your tweeter is having trouble generating that because it's much smaller than your size so it's kind of like having a sumo wrestler and and uh, which is your your tweeter the dome of your tweeter and you throw the air at it and if it's at this frequency it's kind of like throwing another sumo wrestler of the same size and if you go higher it means that what you throw at the sumo wrestler becomes smaller and smaller and and here you are basically throwing a fly at the sumo wrestler so the sumo wrestler cannot catch a fly and cannot work with it because it's just too big a dif size difference between the two and when we go lower this is like throwing bigger and bigger opponents at your sumo wrestler so when we are going up here it's like throwing a, a hulk at your sumo wrestler and then, then here like throwing a, a whale at your sumo wrestler and, and, and that won't work so that's why the impedance gets really really high because we lose efficiency, we lose coupling and, uh, and, and it, it stops being a fun party and another reason for this crossover being so high you see here uh, when we go higher frequency the impedance doesn't rise so much but when we go lower it, it rises to an obscenely high peak and this is because the crossover component so we have inductors and capacitors plus the rising impedance of the driver and add that together and that's how we get this peak and this is the capacitor and inductor for the tweeter for the high pass and also the cap and inductor for the woofer for the low pass so we have a bunch of uh, caps and inductors which are basically energy storing devices they, they store the energy soak it up and then they radiate it back so that's why because of that huge energy storage and soaking and delay issue that's why we have this peak here and um, and these peaks are, are really bad for transistor amplifiers because transistor amplifiers need these valleys to work well because this is where they can dump current where they work well and if you see the uh, impedance rising they cannot dump current and and they become unstable and they don't do not take this well and tube amplifiers they are the exact opposite the higher the impedance the lower the tube distortion so this is a very important lesson for everyone and this is why like if you look at one percent THD for a tube amp and one percent THD for a transistor amp they are not equal especially for that because when you have rising impedance then that drastically brings down the THD for tubes like like orders of magnitude and here check this out we have this huge rising impedance peak between about let's say about 800 hertz to 3-4 kilohertz that region 
and uh, and that's absolutely critical because our ear is more sensitive between one and three kilohertz so the smallest amount of distortion is going to show up in this region and when you throw uh, your uh, uh, amplifier your solid state amplifier on this speaker is going to have trouble with this region so your distortion characteristic will be really poor at the region that counts most where we hear the tiniest signals uh, and tiniest variations and when you use a tube amplifier a zero feedback tube amplifier here at this most critical region you will have extremely clear signal and when we go low here this is where the this is the barrier between uh, the i would say the electrical barrier between <laughs> the woofer and the port and the importance for that is that this also rises to about 20 22 25 ohms maybe and for a good uh, output transformer in a tube amp this is a uh, this is okay they can handle it but you see some tube amps with really tiny output transformers they already poop out here and this is part of the reason why you need big iron to have good base and that's why a lot of tube amps are base shy because they do not have the inductance to handle this high uh, peak here the output transformer inductance doesn't really matter because the frequency is so high that even a wimpy tiny output transformer is going to have plenty of inductance to handle this peak but as the frequency drops then the inductance requirements dramatically climb up so for here we have already trouble with small iron and here at this peak the second one which shows the closure of the port this presents an astronomical demand on transformers so even the best transformers have trouble like at uh, at 20 hertz uh, uh, 16 ohm load 18 ohm load 19 ohm load at 18 hertz that's just tremendous uh, thing to ask from a transformer which is designed for this 4 to 6 ohm working range so for that uh, if, if your uh, transformer can handle this and you want to have this handled by the transformer then you need triple the inductance compared to this level so it means that if you have a transformer that can handle uh, let's say uh, a 6 ohm impedance at 25 hertz then if you want to extend uh, that response down to 18 hertz in the case of the a &E speaker then you will need three times more wire on that transformer so you need a three times bigger transformer to have this type of uh, impedance requirement which is truly monumental and eventually i would say this is the hard stop of the low end output for the a and e speaker and that's because uh here we already reach a maximum so it becomes really hard to drive and even though if you have a great iron and, and audio note makes some excellent output transformers but even if your iron can handle that your driver excursion you are going to run out of driver excursion at this region because here this is where now the woofer cone has taken over again from the port so it dominates the output but to uh, output these super low frequencies the cone has to travel extremely far so if at this distance let's say we are already at three millimeters excursion if we want to have the same signal level here let's say at uh, 17 hertz then it's going to destroy your driver because it would require so big cone movements so that's why i would say this is a hard stop for realistic presentation if you listen to it at whisper volumes then sure you can go down maybe like 15 hertz or, or even lower but at whisper volume that's that's not going to do anything because uh, the lower we go with frequencies especially under 20 hertz just to feel those frequencies you need extremely loud volumes so so let's talk about let's say 17 hertz 
if it's under 90 dB or 100 dB you don't notice that it's there you you will need extremely high volume levels to feel these frequencies so basically that's going to be a limitation for for these speakers but but i do have to add that that this peak here is at, at, at a super low position at 17 18 hertz uh, most speakers this peak is much higher above 20 hertz so especially coming from a this size speaker with that efficiency this is extremely good and um, that's what i have to add to audio note that what it's it's really good at is uh, that it, it does compromises really well because there is speakers in the world and subwoofers who have this peak a little lower than this who can go a little lower or who can have a much more cone excursion so you can play that 18 hertz note 10 db or 20 db louder than the ANE -E -E can but those have uh, tremendous trouble with uh, with the, the drive ability so then you have uh, tremendous current dips so you cannot use uh, uh, low power amplifiers to dry them anymore and uh, and not just that but when you have those extreme uh, power handling monsters then with them come major phase problems and and when we are not even going through the phase issues now because they they are not measured so i cannot cover most of the phase related issues but this is just one technical aspect of engineering the impedance response and frequency response and and overall audio note does an unparalleled job of providing a speaker for us that that does i would say like 95 percent of what is today uh, available for us in every category there are speakers who score 100 percent in some categories but those will score like 20 percent in other categories and there's nothing remotely similar who which speaker can do so well in every aspect of uh, reproduction so so here i show something interesting and this is uh, here we are seeing uh, the a &E curve the impedance and impedance phase and here we, sh we see a uh, wilson audio uh, the alexia's uh, curve and and when you look at the curve i just showed these examples but you can look at any any speaker's curve and and based on how the curves look like if the curves look like like the audio note is that you have these uh, the the valleys which do not go lower than four ohms or or eight ohms or whatever uh, given for your speaker and they also have these massive peaks that that go like four or five times uh the low valley peak so you see we have like four ohms here and it rises up to 20 plus so that's like four five six times uh the rise so when you have these type of scenarios then you can use uh, a single ended amplifier and if the speaker has an efficiency of uh, let's say 95 db or more then even you can use a uh, a single ended amplifier which is no feedback and less than one watt output power and you can be happy with it it will produce music and it will pay decent volume it no it will not uh, blast your room apart into pieces but and uh, but it will provide realistic music at at volumes that you can listen to for hours and hours every day but if you do not want something uh, to for music for real listening you just want a, a show and and boom box effects and turn it on maybe once a month to show off to your friends that your junk can play 10 times louder than their stuff then uh, you you should go f look for speakers that have an impedance curve which is like really low it can drop down to two ohms try try to look something that, that drops to around 2 ohm certainly below 3 ohms because that's a sign 
that it can uh, soak up a lot of current so you your your thousand watt or five thousand or ten thousand watt amplifier can uh, really feel at home with them and work with them extremely well and you must not have these peaks too high so you see here even these peaks are below 5 ohms here at, at 12 hertz it's it's above but at 12 hertz it's not going to work you will have very little output uh, no matter what but but most of this range is below 5 ohms and 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 the mega powered amp will just love that but they will totally poop out if if they see like a 25 ohms uh, load in the mid-range and that's it you can that's why they sound really good and when when you you put the a and e on on a on a thousand watt amp even if it's a really good one you will not like the sound and it's not because the a and e is not good enough for for that solid state amplifier it's because the solid state amps output in the mid-range where your ear is more sensitive is just not nearly enough quality to handle that speakers so so basically let's just summarize uh, the audio not e speaker so this was the speaker that uh, john atkinson reviewed in stereophile and for which we have seen these figures that that he made and um, and actually why and i have to add that john atkinson really loved these speakers and i think even to this day these are his reference speakers so this is the one that he listens to at home so for his home music listening he uses these speakers and uh, and they they are his favorite reference speakers to this day and that's saying a lot because he is the uh, measurement guy and uh, he has measured the largest number of speakers he has heard the most stuff so and he has an engineering background he also has a musician background so he was also a musician he was touring as as a rock musician so so he he is really someone who who knows what is out there and if he made his vote with these amp uh, speakers <laughs> so this is the speaker and that black box that's the external crossover then it's probably a pretty good sounding uh, unit and part of the secret of that is that every part is in made in house so audio not makes uh, everything uh, even the binding post, internal cabling, they make the solder, uh, they make all the inductors, capacitors, everything. And SEAS makes uh, the drivers, but based on uh, AudioNote specifications, and AudioNote provides the silver for, for the coil of these drivers. So, so basically, uh, that's kind of like not made in-house, but as close to made in-house as it gets and they have been optimizing the crossover for 40 years and that's the most important part because as john atkinson was saying that when you look at a speaker design and when you look at the frequency response curve you can tell a good speaker from a bad speaker but only listening will tell a, a good speaker from a great speaker and the difference that between a good speaker and a great speaker is this how much time did you spend on fine-tuning the crossover if it's a multi-driver unit because the crossover then it it's it's responsible for 90 percent of the voicing of your speakers so you can have the same speaker cabinet same drivers and if you alter the crossover the differences will be gigantic and this is my experience it it uh, so depending on the crossover it can sound as an outdated uh, uh, broken box from the 70s or it can sound like the best thing we have today and this is why in the audio note lineup for this speaker they basically all of their a and e series speakers look the same they have the same driver units although different cone material and the cheaper ones have uh, copper coils and the more expensive models have silver coils but apart from that 
they are basically the same they 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 use the same cabinet ratio same insides the the higher scale models are, use birch plywood throughout the lower models have a mix of mdf and birch plywood but but the gigantic difference is between the crossover so so they have i think like three four thousand dollar uh, basic units and their top unit is a million dollars and the difference between three thousand and one million dollar is basically the crossover and and uh, if you never design speakers never toyed around with crossovers then you cannot imagine how big an impact it has and most people are just astounded that when they see audio not that all they do basically is, is is toy around with the crossover and that's what defines the difference between their entry model and their top of the line model and i can tell you that yes it that it has that big of an impact and even though i do not have experience with audio note models because as i said last time i heard one was 20 years ago and i heard only one model but i have my own builders experience which tells me the same thing that indeed crossover uh, component does make the difference between night and day and the other part of this the success of these speakers is to, that it's treated as as a link in the chain so it's optimized for the amps optimized for the entire unit designed to work together so it uses the same internal wiring as the amps use as as the cables use has the same materials binding post as, as your amp has uh, as your uh, rca jacks are everything like the same base metal so audio not they don't just use any kind of silver for their uh, wires and stuff but they use one specific uh, silver which is mined from italy from a specific mine and uh, and they use that single type of fine jewelers silver which which comes from a high silver content ore most of the people who make silver cables they they use uh, uh, random silver that they buy in bulk which comes from multiple places and from ores which have relatively lower s silver content and uh, and the uh, the ad additional metals that 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 are in that silver alloy they vary and they they the composition is is not stable uh they are not voiced as well as as audio notes voice so they are using the same metal for 40 years and they could totally fine tune it when you have just your regular silver supplier year by year the configuration will change and and, and the sonic impact will change so so basically these are the most important points and just uh, covering up the story um I think uh, the the greatest strength of these speakers is that they create music and the success story is because uh, they use the best of the old technology and marry it with the best of new technology and under old technology I mean Alnico drivers so here I have the Altec 515C which I think is probably the best uh, <laughs> Alnico driver ever made in in the older era in the theater era and uh, and audio note is doing the same thing uh, this the altec speaker had paper cone and audio note also has paper cone and they're using now in the more expensive model hemp cone which also uh, behaves like paper and alnico magnets and they also use alnico magnets here and and of course you need to drive uh, them with vacuum tubes because as we have shown in those frequency graphs at the most sensitive mid-range region the tubes do an excellent job so even though if you read the specs and it says one percent thd yes at those regions where the impedance dips it's it's one person there but when you look at the critical mid-range where your ear hears it and where it really counts then it, it it's it's just 0.1 percent or even lower 
so so that's why it's uh, super critical what you do and and of course we see here Marilyn Monroe listening to vinyl I think that's also a really important part that uh, most of the excellent music that we have in recorded histories on vinyl and I would recommend to everyone if you if you are interested in music just uh, think about vinyl because it 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 really connects you to to music much better than digital does and here I have <laughs> Uh, as an example, the Ampex uh, amplifiers that were used in theaters, I think probably these are the maybe the finest low power theater amplifiers, not the highest power. But people are today so obsessed with power that we do not realize that if you have triple the power, you also have triple the amplification required to make that power and also it means that you have the triple the opportunity to mess up the sound and the triple the opportunity to lose those fine details and um, basically this is where I want to end uh, today's audio note speaker analysis thank you for listening and if you like it please like if you want to check out other videos you are more than welcome thank you